this is the MOLA map, which is essentially plotting all of these elevation data points. How did that uh, work? So uh, imagine that we've got some Mars, Mars topography along there, along the bottom. And as uh, Mars Global Surveyor moves along the surface, um, it's sending down these laser pulses, which then bounce back up. And by measuring that time, they can determine how far above the planet the uh, the rover is, uh, the uh, global surveyor is. Then it moves along in its orbit and fires another pulse, bounces back, records the time, so forth. And I just this is just so cool. I just keep, want to keep playing with it for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's just do this. It's like a legitimate like reenactment of what happens. <laughs> Bing! So Bing! Okay. Is that what space looks like? <laughs> no, that's not what space looks like. Is Sorry. Giant thing floating in space too? This is uh, this is what the instrument actually looks like. This is the MOLA instrument, the Mars Orbiter Laser Altimeter. This is a thing that for a couple of years, um, you know, as soon as the uh, probe got into its final mapping orbit. They turned on the MOLA unit, and it basically just kept pinging the planet uh, and recording those, those uh, time intervals and basically sending back millions of data points that then uh, created uh, that map. What I want to do today is for us to simulate that process. Uh, we don't have uh, laser altimeters. We have satellites. We don't have satellites. We have ping pong balls. Uh, the, the ping pong balls don't represent the satellite. The ping pong balls represent the laser pulses. Okay, so what we have? Um, this is not Mars. This is uh, this is a random topography that I drew. Okay, um, we'll do this in half teams. So. This is really not an exercise that you need six or seven people to do. So I figure each team can split into two groups, as long as one member of each of the subgroups has uh, you know, an app on their phone that, where they can record the time. Um, theoretically, to, uh, to really simulate this, uh, what 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 the MOLA instrument did, we would um, go out into the hallway here and uh, pick a height along the hallway that would represent the orbital height of the Mars Global Surveyor. They are very convenient um, uh, strips mounted to the wall for hanging posters, and we can use that as our reference line for the uh, elevation of the Mars Global Surveyor. We would then, should I do laser pointer or pencil? I gotta do one or the other, laser pointer. We would then um, drop the ping pong ball. What we first need to do is let it hit the ground and ideally bounce back up so that we could calibrate its velocity. The one nice thing about the laser altimeter, you know how fast the laser pulses are going. They're going at the speed of light, right? Well, we don't know how fast the ping pong balls are going to drop. Um, and then once we have that calibration of the velocity, we could ideally drop the ping pong ball, somehow have it bounce off of our drawn topography, and bounce back up. That ain't going to happen, right? No. Okay. So we need to uh, reorient this a little bit uh, to make it more, uh, more feasible. The other thing I found out is that the tile floors in the hallway here do not have much bounce. And so you know, ignore, ignore the topography there. I came over and dropped the ping pong balls from a couple meters height 
and they barely bounce back at all. Okay, so um, we're not going to worry about any kind of return trip. I mean, clearly with the uh, MOLA instrument, they're measuring round trip because the satellite is in orbit and they don't have access to the surface. This is remote sensing. You've got the spacecraft up in orbit, all the instruments are up in orbit. How do you actually get data from the planet? Well, in those situations, we're talking about remote sensing. In this case, you know, sending a laser pulse down and having it bounce back up. Um, we're not going to worry about that return trip. Um, the first thing we need to do, yeah. Okay. The first thing we need to do is calibrate the velocity of the ping pong balls. So without the uh, topography in place, we're just going to spend a few minutes dropping ping pong balls and very accurately recording how much time it takes from release here to hitting the floor. And we're not going to worry about how much it bounces because that's too variable. Okay. Now, to, um, that, would, that would allow us to turn time into distance. Okay. We've got a known distance here because we're going to measure it with the meter sticks. And uh, we're, we're going to measure the time it takes for the ball to drop. And therefore, we can uh, basically match up the time with the distance by calculating the vo velocity. Now, yeah. I know the ping pong ball is accelerating. It's all that physics stuff. But we're going to gloss over that. We're just going to say that the ping pong ball immediately drops at a constant velocity, which is, is uh, not real, but it will make it our life much easier. Now theoretically, the group could then tape their um, drawn topography to the base of the wall, have somebody drop the ball, and stop timing when it crosses this line. But I think that's going to be pretty variable and messy data from time to time. So what we're going to do instead is system by taping our, our topographies up to the top and then coming along and releasing the ball from where the uh, profile is. You can very accurately say go and someone starts the timer, someone releases the ball and then you stop timing when it hits the floor. So you're always just stopping the timing when it hits the floor of the hallway. So I think that will make our data a little bit more reliable. So, two reasons for doing this lab. One is to really get you understanding how this laser altimeter stuff really works. Second is to give you an opportunity to actually collect some numbers, collect some data, to realize how messy it is to actually do real science. Because uh, when you do replicates, it's, you're not going to get the same measurement all the time, and you're going to have to figure out how to deal with that.